Number one from the second paper of the 2009 hire, eight mark question, turning points and determining their natures. That should be fairly straightforward then. Turning points, differentiate it. dy by dx will be, go through the process of differentiating, multiplying by the power, taking one off the power. 3x squared, two threes are six, dropping it down just to x, and then just the coefficient. And then don't forget your statement. You'll know when you're at a stationary point, because you'll have stopped moving up, and you'll have paused momentarily before you're going down, or vice versa. So a stationary point means that momentarily, dy by dx, which of course stands for the gradients, should be zero. That means 3x squared minus 6x minus 9 equals 0. Right, factorise that. First thing, take out the common factor of 3. You could divide it out completely, and if I was only interested in the x's that gave an answer of 0, I would certainly do that. But since I'm going to use this afterwards to evaluate the value of the gradient before and afterwards, whether it's positive or negative, it's probably safer to leave that in. It doesn't actually matter if it's positive, but it would make a difference if it was negative. I'll leave that in. So taking out the 3, it's going to be x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0 that I've got to solve. So it's 3 times. It must be x, x. It must be 1, 3. The negative must go to the greater. That says they're opposite, so it must be plus 1. So I've got my two solutions in. x equals negative 1 or x equals 3. Now it did say the stationary points, not just the x coordinates of them, so I'll have to put that back into this to find their corresponding y coordinates. I'll just use this little space over here then. If x is negative 1, then using the coordinate equation, the one that will give me the y coordinate corresponding to the given x coordinate, I've got negative 1 cubed minus 3 times negative 1 squared minus 9 times negative 1 plus 12, which will be negative 1, and that'll be take away 3, so it's take away 4, but plus 9, plus 12, so that's 17. So one of the points is at negative 1, 17. And when x is 3, that means y is going to be 3 cubed minus 3 times 3 squared. Well, that's handy, because that's exactly the same thing. They're both 3 cubed. Minus 9 times 3, and then plus the 12. So there you go, so it'll be minus 27 plus 12 minus 15. So the other point would be 3, negative 15. So those are the stationary points. Now, justify their natures, because you know, of course, what they're going to be. That's a positive x cubed graph, and a positive x cubed graph looks like that. So it's going to be a maximum, then a minimum. But it did say justify it, and I don't think just saying, well, it must look like that is going to cut any ice with them. If that's the correct expression. So I'll have to put down a nature table. Now, it all depends how you're going to put down your table of signs. You may well have to do it this way. So you put down something before and something after each of those, consider them as neighbourhoods, keeping that those two points quite separate, as if there's a dangerous zone in this graph between. And then just hit the thing with a hammer. Just actually work out what this whole thing comes to at certain values chosen in between and so on. So you've got dy by dx would be, and then you pick some numbers. So before negative 1, you might say negative 2. You might go to negative 10. Let's say I use negative 2. After it, I could use 0. And you're probably just going to use 0 again then. Well, that defeats the whole purpose of neighbourhoods. So I'm going to pick something like 2 just to make it awkward for you. And then after that, something like 4. But then you probably would just say, why not choose 10? Because that'll be easy. Why not just make them the same, call them 0? And that's perfectly fair. Why not say something like negative 10? That would do anything you like. But the whole point about this is, I don't really need to work them out. I don't need to feed them into this and go through all the arithmetic when all I'm interested in, is it going up? Because it's positive. Is it going down? because it's negative, because I've got this factorised expression that will do it for me. If I had some expression that didn't factorise, that's what I would have to do. But this did factorise, so I could just use this instead. So I could just say, well, at negative 1, obviously, that bracket comes to 0, so 0 times anything 0. x equals 3, that bracket comes to 0, anything times 0 is 0. But you knew that anyway, that was the whole point of those two solutions. Now, what about negative 2? 
If I put a negative 2 in there, this answer, this bracket will be negative. If I put a negative 2 in there, that will also be negative, and I'll have a positive times a negative times a negative, which is positive. 0, that's positive. 0, that's negative. A positive times a positive times a negative is negative. 2, 2 plus 1 is positive. 2 take away 3 is negative. A positive times a positive times a negative is negative. And of course those signs will be the same. After 3, 4, 4 and 1 is positive. 4 take away 3 is positive. Positive times positive positive is positive. And there, you get an answer for the shape of it. It was going up, it's going along, it's going down, it's going down, it's going along, it's going up. So you've got a maximum turning point and a minimum turning point. <clears throat> and of course that doesn't matter which numbers you chose. You could have done it this way, or you could simply have chosen one number in between. You could just have made it one part there and said what happens in between and just called that zero. You could just have gone far away to something nice and easy like 10. You could have gone back to negative 10 to keep it easy, you'd have got the same answers. Or you could make up a table of signs like this. Something happened at negative 1, something happened at 3, what happened between, what happened after, what happened before. But instead of trying to evaluate it in one go, I'll put down the factorisation. Now there was a 3 times it, you could put the 3 in if you like, but 3 is not going to change the sign of an answer. I've got these two factors here. If that had been a negative 3, I'd have put a negative in, because that negative would influence the other factors. No, I've got an x plus 1, and I've got an x minus 3. And together they'll tell me the sign of the derivative. Quite simply because now, x plus 1 is a linear expression, it's going to grow, just think of the line y equals x plus 1. It's going to have negative values until it hits 0, and then it'll always have positive values. x minus 3 is also a linear expression that's growing up the way. When x is negative 1, that'll be 0. If you make the number less than negative 1, even by a tiny amount, so it's negative 1 and a little bit, that negative will overwhelm the positive, and that answer will be negative. Now there's the real value in the neighbourhood, because that's negative according to this expression, as close as you like, not stepping miles away to negative 2 or negative 10. What happens between? Well, as soon as you exceed negative 1, this positive 1 will, ex will be bigger, in which case it's going to be positive ever after. Same with this one. When's that, neg when's that 0? At 3. So if you've got a number here that's less than 3, this answer will be negative. It's only when that number x gets to more than 3 that it's going to then go positive. And then multiplying the signs. Negative times a negative, positive. 0 times anything, 0. Negative times a positive, negative. That's 0. Multiplying them, positive. This was done without any calculation whatsoever. Normally you don't even have to think through the steps. If you put down the two factors in a table of signs, then all you have to do then is say, well, when is it 0? Because whatever the linear expression is, <clears throat> it'll always be negative on one side and positive on the other, because it's a straight line. And if it's a straight line with a positive x, it must be going upwards, so it must be negative, then positive. Same here. It must be all negative until it was 0, and then positive afterwards, multiplying it out. Same result. Maximum turning point, minimum turning point. It just remains now. Put it together. Well, I could put it down just after these, couldn't I? We've got negative 1, 17 is a maximum turning point, and 3 negative 15 is a minimum turning point. Spelling it out further if you liked to write the words out in full, but that would do then for number 1.